لنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله our topic and our lecture will be today something that is very important and I wish that there would be more people to benefit because it has something to do with the elders and it has something to do with the youth as well what are your rights as parents in Islam that your children must understand that your children must do and what are the rights of the children what rights do they have as children Muslim children and what's your obligation as a parent and what must you do to fulfill the final successful thing that we all want which is entering Jannah inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after talking about a tawheed and the importance of the oneness of Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَعَبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here the second command after Tawheed, after he's saying, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The call that all the prophets before us used to do. Calling to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that, and be righteous to your children or to your parents. Being righteous to your parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that command second after Tawheed. Showing the emphasis and the importance of the walid, the mother and the father. Something that a lot of us really lack, whether it be young in age or old in age. We might be 40 years old and we might have parents that are still alive and we might not still look after them. We might not still communicate with them as much. We might be too busy in our daily life and our daily routine. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was mentioning parents' rights and how you should, as parents, or what you should expect from your children, he mentioned a lot of ahadith. And from the ahadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned is that when your mother and your father as Abu Huraira, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the companions, they all had at one point in their life parents who were non-Muslims. And they all treated them in this world and had something called al-musahaba bil-ma'roof. They used to be with them in this life on friendly terms. The Anbiya before us, Ibrahim alayhi salam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us in the Quran, his father was a non-Muslim, but he spoke to him in such a way to call him to al-Islam. He tried, Ya Abati. He told him, Oh my father, spoke to him in a good way, called him to Tawheed. His father did not respond. Did he stop there? No, he did not stop there. He continued and he continued and he continued. And in the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides. Al-Hidayah bi So one thing 
that children must understand and that youth must understand is that you have to actually be acquainted with your parents in this life on good terms. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam when parents called or when parents used to call to Tawheed these were parents or these were I, I apologize when the NBA used to call to Tawheed they did it based on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if your parents are non-Muslims if your parents are Muslims but not practicing that does not mean that you stop and you cut them off. You have to have something called Al Bir Bir Walidain. And when you have this, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran, a lot of things will be easier for you in this life and in the hereafter. There are plenty of examples in the Quran and in the, zun in the Sunnah about how one should treat their parents. But inshallah, we're going to actually try to summarize these things. First of all, there's dua that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith that is Hassan and that is narrated by Ibn Majah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ثَلَاثَةُ دَعَوَاتِ يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُنَّ لَا شَكَّ فِيهِنَّ There are three types of dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept these duas. No doubt. The first one is the da'wah of the mazloom, the person who is being oppressed. When a person is oppressed, his du'a will be accepted. The sama, the sky is open, and this person being oppressed, inshallah, he will get his justice. The second type that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I should say, mentioned is the du'a of the musafir, somebody who is traveling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this du'a. And the third part, or the third type is, the dua of the person who is musafir. Or I apologize, the dua of the person or the, of the parents. The mother and the father, if they make dua, it is a very serious thing. And I urge the parents not to make dua against their children. Their parents, unfortunately, they do this out of anger. And you never know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there are many cases that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might accept this du'a, wa'iyadu billah. The du'a of the parent should be in a good way. If your child oppresses you in some form, if your child is not listening to your rules, if your child is somebody who is not righteous, you don't make du'a against them. You make du'a for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can guide them. This is the way of the righteous people. You make du'a for your children, not against your children. Also, there are ways that somebody can be the child, I should say, can be righteous to their parents in this life and in the hereafter. The ways that you can be righteous to your child in this life is that, or to your parents in this life, I should say, is that you do something called lower your wings to your parents when they get old in age. To have Rahma on them, as they have raised you and had mercy on you when you were young. This is a right that they deserve. This is a right that you must fulfill. And this is the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as he has told us in the Sunnah, that you must be good to your parents, and that Allah subhanahu wa taala told us in the Quran that we must be righteous parents or righteous children to our parents. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and a lot of you might not know this, that after your child, that after your parents die, there are ways that your parents can have continuous ajr. Ajr that is continuous, that does not stop. If you have left behind a righteous child, a boy or a girl, whatever it may be, there are things, ta'a, that this child does. You have bring your child to the masjid. You raise your child in a righteous way. When your child grows up and you pass away, his ibadat, the worship that he used to do, because of your tarbiyah, the righteous way you raise your child, 
these things, inshallah, you will get the reward for this. Just like somebody you give da'wah to. When you give da'wah to this person, and you teach them, and you tell them what La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah means, and they do all types of worshipping acts, they will receive their reward, and you will get a reward without any nuqsan, without anything being gone from him or from you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in hadith, إِنَّ أَطْيَبَ مَا أَكَلْتُمْ مِنْ كَسْبِكُمْ وَإِنَّ أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ كَسْبِكُمْ The best thing that you eat is something that is from your kasib, something that you earned. And your children are something that you have deserved and you earned. They wouldn't be in this life if it wasn't for the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it wasn't for you bringing them to this earth with a righteous wife. So whatever happens with this offspring, whatever good things that you do, and don't misunderstand me, a lot of mashallah, tabarakallah, children are raised up righteously by people who are around them, their surroundings. But their parents, if they happen to be parents who are against Islam, parents who let their child not wear hijab, make their child not go to Quran class, think their child is going to be too religious, but the child still comes out religious, do not think you're going to get the reward for that child or what he is doing. Because you were going against him from the beginning. It wasn't because of you that this child is doing righteous things. So you have to understand this, that you have to actually be part of this child's tarbiyah and raising this child in this life. Also, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said another hadith that is sahih as well. When you die, and you see yourself in the hereafter being raised in darajat, being raised in levels. And you know that you didn't do things to deserve this level. You know that you didn't do anything, any action special to be raised high in these ranks. Listen to what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us in this hadith. إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَا تُرْفَعُ دَرَجَتُهُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ The man, the person, his levels will be raised in Jannah. فَيَقُولُ أَنَّ هَذَا Where did I get this from? Where, have I, where is this khair coming from? فَيُقَالُ بِاسْتِغْفَارِ وَرَدِكَ لَك Because of the istighfar, because of the seeking forgiveness from your child for you. Your child made istighfar for you. Your child asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. When he made sujood, he made istighfar for you. When you passed away, he did things that you cannot even imagine out of Righteousness, because you did righteous things, you raised him in a good way, and he realized that when he or she grew up. You passed away, subhanAllah, he made umrah for you. You passed away, he made hajj for you. You passed away, he gave sadaqatul jariyah, a sadaqah that is continuous. You passed away, and he brings things to the masjid for donations on your behalf. You will be raised in ranks because of these things. Because of these things, and you will ask to yourself, you will receive a reward in this action as well. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentioned to us that there are rights that the parents must fulfill for their child as well. There are things that the parents have to do in order for your child to be a righteous person. And there are rights that your child deserves we talked about the rights of the parents, being humble, being somebody who actually is understanding. Also, the child has rights. The child is not expected to do things that are haram because of your lack of tarbiyah, because of your lack of raising the child in an Islamic manner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that our children are a fitna. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَأَلَمُوا أَنَّ مَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهِ عِنْدَهُ عَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Know that your children and your wealth are a fitna for you. They are a trial, a tribulation, a test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him is where the ajr and that you will get the final foes, the azim, the ajr that is very big. Our children are something that is called قُرَّةُ أَعْيُنْ When you see your child Subhanallah, you want to actually make, you want to be proud, you want to see your child being somebody who is righteous, you want to see your child being somebody who is 
successful in this life and in the hereafter. But at the same time, that child can be a fitna for you. It can be a fitna for you because of certain things. The way you raise your child, and sometimes you might actually make compromise in your deen because your child. You might actually take your child, subhanAllah, to these festivities that they have as we speak right now. They might be in the mall right now, and they might be celebrating something called Christmas and trying to buy presents and trying to be visiting this man by the name of Santa Claus because you compromised your religion. You said, you know what, it's okay, it's fun. They're children, they're young, they don't understand. But wallahi, they understand. And if you pass away in this state, and they are raised in this thing, this will actually be something that is tied into their heart. This will be a part of their aqidah. Fitna. Your child became a fitna for you, and you became a fitna for your child. Because you compromised your deen. Subhanallah. Similarly, wealth is a fitna as well. Because wealth can take you away from the ibadah, and take you away from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your right as a parent that your child deserves is finding him or her a righteous mother. And the other way around as well, finding the mother has to find a righteous husband for that child. Because on the day of judgment, you will be asked about these things. And your child, because of you and your spouse you chose, will be upon these things and upon how your child raises or how your spouse raises this child. You're responsible for this. You will be asked on the Day of Judgment regarding these things. As Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says that a woman is made for certain things, for four things, for her wealth, also for her nasab, for her lineage. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that she is, mentioned, uh, she is married as well for her beauty. You can marry a woman because of her beauty. And also, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the final thing that we see here, he, is mentioned, he mentioned that, لِدِينِهَا For her deen. You are responsible as a parent to find a righteous sister. And vice versa as well, the mother has to find a righteous husband because children will be produced and out of this there will be subhanallah a future coming up and you will be asked on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for these things people think that nowadays subhanallah inshallah Rabbana subhanahu wa ta'ala say hadihi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide her no problem but after a struggle, a struggle, a struggle, what happens is a divorce happens and then you have a child being raised in a broken household and that not, that's not something that is healthy for the child and that's something that's not healthy for the parent as well. Also giving the child a good name. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a hadith mentioned that there was a man or there was a lady and her name was Asiya. Her name was Asiya. And we all know what the Asi person is. A person who does all types of haram. Somebody who is not a taqi, somebody who is not pious, somebody who does commits all types of sins. A sinner. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa changed that lady's name and he says, Anti Jamila, you are beautiful. He changed the name. There was a man that was named as well Huzn, or I should say Sad. His name was Sad, that was his name. Imagine any of you being named Sad. How would your, subhanAllah, confidence be? You wouldn't be that confident. What did Prophet Muhammad وسلم, name him? He renamed, he renamed him, he told them, Anta Sahal, you are easy. SubhanAllah. So your rights as a parent, is to name your child a good name. Choose the name of the names of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the most. Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, the slave of Allah, the slave of Ar Rahman. Choose the names of the Anbiya. But nowadays, unfortunately, we have a lot of young youth. Their names 
are names of non-Muslims, unfortunately. Muslim, but his name is a non-Muslim name. Out of the culture that they have, they had actually um, got used to in the environment they are living in. As a matter of fact, they can be in a Muslim country and still have a non-Muslim name. This is not going to remind your child of who, and who he or she is. This can actually cause other problems and a shame from being Muslims. Also, your right as a parent is to actually have something called teaching your child the akhlaq of al-Islam, akhlaqiyat al-Islamiyya, the manners of a Muslim, how to behave, what kind of akhlaq he or she should have. You shouldn't be singing around your children because they'll be singing all the time. You shouldn't be cussing and using all types of slang, derogatory, disrespectful name calling because your child is going to be like that. You should always use good things. Teach your child the good manners, how to respect the elders, how to give salam, smiling, good things. Some things that we really lack as Muslims nowadays. Not a lot of us, but some of us lack these things. And this is something that we have to really emphasize. The Anbiya before us used to teach their children these things. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also mentioned to us that there are things that you must do or the parents must do and this thing is al-ibadah worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching our children how to pray salah teaching our children the basic fundamentals of tawheed teaching our children the arkan of Islam things that are wajib upon you the question is how is the child going to learn these things if the parent does not know these things so your right as a parent is to get educated in Islam get educated in teaching yourself first of all so you can be a person who is not ignorant of his deen not ignorant of the fundamental practices of Islam and teaching them how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is wajib upon you it is sad when we come to the masjid and we see our young youth not being able to pray salah not being able to make wudu this child might be the age of puberty he or she might be subhanallah somebody who is mukallif somebody who is held accountable for what he or she is doing but they don't know how to make wudu they don't know how to pray salah they don't know what la ilaha illa muhammad rasulullah means your wajib as a parent before any other thing is teaching your children the deen of al-islam from the rights of the parents as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us in the Sunnah and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us and he has taught us that you have to focus on something called the major bank account the bank account of the Hasanat the one that you see in the Akhirah yes it's good to raise money or raise funds for your child's education yes it's good to raise funds for his or her future, to buy them a car in the future. Yes, all these things are very important. We all want to learn, we all want to earn these things for our child so they can have a good, bright future. Inshallah, buy a house so they can live in the house in the future. All these things are something called ahdaf dunyawiyya. These are things that goals of the dunya, goals that you want to reach in this life. We have something called ahdaf ukhrawiyya. Goals that we want to reach in the Akhirah. The goals of the Akhirah are more important than these goals that you will leave, that he and she can leave before they even get old in age, that both of you can die because of some sort of incident, some sort of accident that might happen, and none of you will be left. This will, you will not take any of these things. As we know, when somebody dies, there are three things that follow this person. Two things go back. The three things that will follow this person are as follows. Maluhu, his wealth. When the person dies, his wealth will be left behind. Who can tell me the two other things, inshallah? 
Who can tell me the things that when somebody dies, they leave behind? I'll give you another one, inshallah. His family. I need one more. وَعَمَلُهُ Subhanallah. These things will be left behind when the person passes away. When you pass away, subhanallah, your amal, which is your ra'sul mal, your capital, will follow you. Your family will go back. Everything else will go back. Your wealth will go back. But your amal, the way you used to teach your child, things that you used to do for yourself. Because we mentioned, if your child is righteous, inshallah, you will also, inshallah, bin Allah ta'ala, receive ajr for whatever that child is doing. The salihat, the things that he is doing. Because you are a reason after the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this child is doing these things. You will receive these words as well. Without him or her getting any nuqsan, any deductions from what they are doing. You will be in that situation as well. So the rights you have as a parent, the rights you have as a child, we can keep talking about this and we can make a series of lectures regarding these things. But what I want to focus on right now is, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَمَا قَالَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ A righteous child that is benefited from, from the ummah. If you leave this thing behind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for this. Just imagine you as a parent, subhanallah, raising a child in Islamic tarbiyah, Islamic manners, teaching him how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he or she grows up to become an imam of a masjid. He or she becomes a big da'iyah. He or she becomes a hafid of kitabillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the ultimate goal. Wallahi, this is the ultimate goal that we all as parents should focus upon. No problem. We all want our children to be doctors, engineers, um, all types of professions. That is definitely something that is good. And inshallah, this will help them. Bi idnillah ta'ala help the Muslim ummah. But the ultimate goal is to have a righteous son, a righteous daughter. So you and he can benefit in this life and their hereafter. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also taught us in the hadith that the salah and that the ibadat in general are things that you have to have two conditions for these things to be accepted. The ibadat and the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have two conditions that must be fulfilled before them being accepted at all. And if the parents don't know this and if the child does not know this as well, and in these gatherings, a lot of people are used to, mashallah, tabarakallah, lectures that are emotional, lectures that are telling a lot of stories, Lectures that mention a lot of things that people might want to be entertained by. But I just wanted, inshallah, make it more basic for people to understand. If you are ignorant of this as a parent and as a child, then your worship will not be accepted at all. The first thing is that you have to have sincerity in your ibadah. al ikhlas fil ibadah. If you don't have ikhlas, sincerity in your ibadah, your worship will not be accepted at all. You do things for show, your worship will not be accepted. You do things farther than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your worship will not be accepted. The other thing is that you have to follow the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unfortunately, a lot of their parents do not know the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A lot of our children do not know the seerah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A lot of our parents and a lot of our youth do not know the names of the prophets that are mentioned in the Quran. A lot of the parents don't know the stories behind the prophets. Who is Nuh? Who is Salih? Who is Ismail? Who is Ibrahim? What did Ibrahim and Ismail do? They built the Kaaba. 
things that are very important for our children to learn and for us to learn the stories and the wisdom behind these stories that we should really focus upon are not being taught to our children and are not being taught to our adults as well. Unfortunately, we can talk about what happened yesterday in the latest soap opera. We can talk about what happened last night in the basketball game. We can talk about what happened to so-and-so last week amongst our children, Ghiba and Namima, backbiting. We can tell them all these things. But the basic fundamentals of our religion, unfortunately, we cannot teach our children. I want to talk about the reasons behind these problems and lack of being righteous as a parent and being righteous as a child. See, when your child does not know how to respect because of lack of terbiyah, lack of raising your child in a righteous way, understand that he or she will not respect anybody as well because of your lack of respect, of the way you carry yourself, the way you actually hold yourself, the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you act, do not expect your child to be righteous. And this is because of lack of educating that person or educating him or herself in Islam. Coming to the masajid is another problem that a lot of people face. In these mu'tamarat and these halaqat that we have, Alhamdulillah alameen, last night when I came by, I seen the halaqat, mashallah tabarakallah, and the vehicles were packed to the front. Families were happy, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Children were running around. Everybody was having a good time, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But the day that our masajid and our children, adults and youth, all come to the masjid on a regular basis, basis for their salah, Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing this and making this a adah is the day that when we will actually see a change amongst the Muslim Ummah in the GTA area. Because first you have to focus upon yourself first. You can't really change the state of the other Muslims unless you change yourself as well. So I, as a brother who himself might be lacking in this department, am requesting and reminding myself that we should get our families involved in the massage and learning their religion. And alhamd, in this markaz of Markaz Abu Huraira, there are a lot of activities happening. As a matter of fact, there are durus. And Shaykh Bilal Phillips, mashallah, tabarakallah, is here and he's teaching a number of lectures on a weekly basis, continuous. And you can only count the people from the brother's side with your hands. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Allahu A'lam. The sister's side may be similarly. What's happening? Is the masjid at fault? Or is the child, or is the adult, I mean, at fault? Because the adult is responsible for that child. Or are we doing what a lot of parents like to do? Dropping our children off at the masjid and expecting them to be raised by the masjid. And don't get me wrong, the masjid has a role in raising a child as well. But the parents have to focus and they have to take part of these things. And this is something called sharing time together, quality time together as parents and as children. Because as the Arabs say, كَمَا تَدِينُ tudan." In the future, when your child gets old and you become old in age, if you taught your child how to actually be a good, responsible human being, be a good Muslim, your child, inshallah, will take care of you and his or her children will take care of them. It's a chain. It's a continuous chain. But if you are not good to your parents, the child is not good to his parents and actually uh, regards, doesn't respect their parents and in the future he or she has children, similarly, that chain will continue. So what I'm saying right now, inshallah, is very simple. It takes two sides. It takes two sides. Parents and children 
being educated in an Islamic environment to be successful. Very simple. My lecture is very basic. It is very easy. When we have a tarbiyah al-Islamiyyah in the household, Islamic manners in the household, Wallahi, you understand that you will have an actual century of children growing up, people growing up and making change in the Muslim Ummah. Do not think that your child cannot make a difference. Do not think that you cannot make a difference because you're old in age. You can make a difference, but it takes Islamic education and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to answer to him on the day of judgment with the correct answer. So insha'Allah, I'm going to be stopping there, I don't know if there are any questions, insha'Allah we can have maybe two or three minutes or two or three questions, insha'Allah. And if there's no questions, insha'Allah, that means we can stop. Yes, Sheikh. Yes, any, any type of travel you're doing out of the city you live in, insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept this dua, insha'Allah. Because as we know, traveling is a hardship. It's very difficult. It's not easy. You go through a lot of hardships sometimes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua of the person who's traveling, insha'Allah. This is from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. You get deeds for that. Yeah. The parents, yes. The parents, when they, when they raise their children, why, what's the reason you're here? Your parents brought you here by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are basically part of them and they are part of you. So whatever action they do that is good, inshallah, that you taught them, inshallah, you'll get the reward for that. So if, you, if your mom and your father are bringing you to the masjid, they're teaching you the Qur'an, they bring you to the Shaykh tomorrow's Qur'an, inshallah. Not only will you get a reward, they also get a reward for, uh, for that as well. So it's a win-win situation, right? Inshallah. So yes, the brother asked a question where um, he said there's a, there's a brother, for example, who is always, when he's with his brothers, his iman is increasing, mashallah, tabarakallah. He's feeling very good and he wants to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he goes home for the weekdays, when he's in the mission on the weekends, but in the weekdays, he's home and that household basically um, is not that Islamic from what I understand. His iman decreases. What can this person do at this time for his iman to increase? It's a very good question, inshallah. This person, and uh, a lot of people can relate to this question because when a household is being, um, there's music being played in the house, and there's the TV is working 24 hours in the house, and it's not an Islamic household, but the person is religion. What can this person do while he's living in this house? First of all, this person, I ask this person not to be very rebellious and not to be very hating in the household. You shouldn't actually try to um, uh, get angry, start punching the walls, start fighting everybody, saying this is haram, don't do this, don't do that, throw the TV out of the window. You shouldn't do these types of things. You should actually, inshallah, from understand, this person might have a room, inshallah, that he or she um, resides in. Try to spend as much time in your room. When you go out to the kitchen downstairs, try to advise them, inshallah, in the best way. And being patient. That's the best way to actually succeed in this thing. Because you're forced to live in this house. 
you may not be able to um, afford living outside of this house. After all, they are Muslim. So inshallah, try to be patient with them, try to give them da'wah. And by your good akhlaq, by your good manners, this can be a reason for them being guided, inshallah. Bidnillah ta'ala. Alaykum Yes, basically um, the beginning part is the one I have knowledge from insha'Allah that when your child reads a certain age and in the hadith it's seven, seven years old you should command them and worship it in praying a salah commanding them in praying a salah this is something that is very important this is the one I have knowledge of brother so at this age group as we all know subhanAllah children pick up things very quick Children, their brains are like, subhanAllah, sponge. They can really, subhanAllah, attain things and um, dissect information. So when that child reads seven, inshallah, the parents should actually teach them how to pray salah. Don't wait till they're seven years old. Teach them when three, four, five, six, seven. But when they're seven, command them to pray salah um, as the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says. There's another question, inshallah, we'll make this the final one. If you don't have sincerity in your ibadah, in your worship, how long does your worship won't be accepted? Basically, how long won't your worship be accepted? That's how should the wording should be. Do you understand the question? If you're not sincere in your worship at all, you don't have the sincerity. As we mentioned, there are two conditions for somebody's worship to be accepted. Being sincere and following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. If you're not sincere, the sister is saying, how long does this person that was doing this worship uh, won't his ibadah be accepted? From what I know, Allahu A'lam, that his ibadah won't be accepted at all, except with this condition, with sincerity. This is the condition. Wallahu A'lam. Inshallah, we'll stop there. Barakallahu feekum.